for agribusiness to be offering the solution to climate change is going in the wrong direction to me for a couple of reasons. One is that agribusiness, by its very nature, uh, is looking for more standardized products and uh, is operating on a global food system. But what we know is that uh, resilience is the key. And having a lot of farmers growing a lot of different kinds of crops is a much better buffer. It increases the overall resilience. Having farmers growing crops and uh, transporting them short distances is also a better buffer because if we have a major climate-induced catastrophe in one part of the world, then the, the results of that aren't cascading through the entire food system. They're more localized. And uh, resilient, robust food systems that are still operating in other parts of the world can help meet the need in a crisis of these areas that have been affected by global climate change. If with agribusiness, the food production is being moved to parts of the world that have low labor costs or low environmental standards, and um, food systems that had been operating on a local scale are drying up because there are no longer markets available for small scale food production, what we're going to see is less capacity to respond to those kinds of emergencies. Biotechnology, um, or the, the proponents of biotechnology, say that the prospects of having drought-resistant plants or um, uh, heat-resistant plants are just over the horizon. But there are a couple of problems there. One is that what we really want is a diversity of different plants. We don't want a single plant that supposedly is drought resistant. We want to be growing a multitude of different plants that can accommodate the range of different climate climatic conditions that we're likely to see with climate change. Remember, it's not just a, a slowly um, rising temperature that a heat resistant plant might be able to accommodate. We're looking at, at rapid fluctuations in uh, growing conditions and having um, uh, floods followed by droughts, having heat spells followed by cold snaps. So what we really need is a greater diversity of plants. We need very much to be preserving the kind of genetic diversity that indigenous peoples, traditional peoples, uh, women in particular, have been maintaining throughout the millennia in which agriculture has been practiced. We don't need a single super gene or a, a super variety that somehow will um, be a silver bullet approach to climate change. It, it's just a, it's the wrong approach overall. It's a technological engineering approach to a, a biological problem. Another problem with um, agribusiness being the, the holder of the solutions to um, global climate change is that agribusiness um, has not been all that friendly overall to uh, indigenous peoples of the world and women smallholders who are the people who are most at risk of hunger right now. Uh, about 50% of the people at risk of hunger, according to the Special Rapporteur on Right to Food, are smallholders. About 10% uh, are pastoralist, fisher folk. Um, about 20% are the urban poor. And these are not people who agribusiness are reaching out to embrace. Agribusiness is set up to deal best with wealthier landowners who can supply larger amounts uh, into global value chains. 
it really requires a change in the way business is being run uh, for smallholders, particularly women, to be integrated into value chains. It makes a lot more sense for approaches to work with farmers to try to build up local markets, um, to use the traditional knowledge that they already have, to um, d help them build up capacity where they live to adapt to climate change.